Welcome back to Ride and Glide. Today we're reviewing one of Dualtron's newest models, the Dualtron City. Having City in the name makes you feel like Jultron have tried to make this a more urban scooter than, than maybe some of their more powerful smaller wheeled scooters they brought out in the past or off-road scooters. So with the big tyres, it's got 15 inch tyres on this scooter, so that's totally different to anything they've done before. But that makes it more look like a bicycle or one of the urban scooters like the Element Bondi, something like that, um, that are out on the market at the moment. The big difference with this scooter, and in true Dualtron style, is they've put massive motors on it, uh, a massive battery, and a million lights as usual. Time for a Dualtron Disco! So as usual, we'll start down with the tires. As I've said, they're 15 inch, so that's a massive compared to normal tires that you see on most scooters, and especially Dualtrons, they're normally 11 inch maximum. So that's diameter across top to bottom. The motor you'll see housed in the middle is the same, but they've got a different spoke design to allow those big tires to be put on. So to me, they look about three inch. Let's see what they say on here. So we've got uh, two and a half. So two and a half inch across. They look pretty wide though, and they've got um, a slight tread pattern on them. Not a lot, so they're semi-slick. So they're gonna be made for hard ground. Compound looks pretty good, so I imagine they're gonna grip well but wet conditions, they might not be ideal or off-road conditions. So this is, as they say, Dualtron City made for hard ground. Moving in from the tires, we've talked about the spokes. Motor in the middle, so that's a classic Dualtron motor, so they're hub motors on here. 4,000 watt peak power across both. So that would show 2,000 watt per motor peak power, so probably around 1,000 watts nominal power per motor. Pretty powerful. If you think the rules, when the, the rules change in this country, probably are gonna be around 500 watt for legality, this is gonna be way too powerful to fall into that category. So let's hope there's a speed limit rather than a motor limit put on these scooters. As you can see in front of the motor there, we've got the disc. So 160 mil discs connected to these Zoom hydraulic disc brakes. Going all the way up to the handle here, we've got them, I've seen them before on loads of different scooters. They're very effective Zoom. They're not the super high quality, but they're not the lowest quality either. They're a good solid hydraulic brake. What is different on this scooter to quite a lot of the um, other Dualtrons, as we've said, with the big wheels, you need much bigger swing arms. So we've got this huge swing arm coming up here and down from here from the stem. In here is the cartridge suspension. That's classic Dualtron suspension. Front and back can be replaced. It's a bit of a job. It's not as easy as just, um, say, like on the Nami, adjusting uh, with a few clicks. You actually have to take it apart and put a new cartridge in, but it is changeable, which is a really useful feature if you like a softer ride or a harder ride or a medium ride. LEDs up the side as usual. Let me just turn some of those on for you so you can get an idea. We know Dualtrons are Christmas trees. Everyone loves them who buys them because of that fact. We'll put them on here. You can change all these colors if you like. You can have them fixed. You can have them all of these different colors or flashing like we've got here, or you can turn them off completely. Coming up then from the suspension swing arms, you see we've got this quite attractive fender actually to obviously protect the rider from dirt, obviously any bits of water that are spraying up. Quite well designed, got the Dualtron logo on top. Very long swing arms as we said, connecting to this neck. So normally with the Dualtron, that will be down much lower with the 11 inch wheels and you have a long neck. On this actually a very short neck. But what they have incorporated is Dualtron's new locking mechanisms. So they all come with this double clamp and these two locking nuts at the bottom, which makes it a lot more rigid than their older designs, uh, where the necks were often quite creaky and you get a lot of rock in them. Of course, you're still going to get some rock in the necks. It's just by design, that's how they are, but it's a lot better than the old designs. Coming down here towards the deck, we've got this sort of three tubes all welded together. I wouldn't say unattractive, but possibly not possibly could have made a slightly better design there, I think, not too sure. When you look at the whole scooter in general, it's quite a nice look, but looking individually here, not too sure how that works in with the deck, but it's not gonna put me off at the moment. You can see we've got a horn in behind here. Let's just give that a go. They're always loud Dualtron horns, so just <coughs> consistently loud. So yeah, they've used the same Dualtron horn they've used on all their others. Um, then we come down to the deck. One thing I really like about the Dualtron City is it has a removable battery. So in the middle here, on the front of the deck, the set keys, put it in, turn your keys, 
and you can lift up the deck there. It's just on a hinge here. And within the deck is the 25 amp hour 60 volt batteries. Big batteries, gonna give you range of probably, they're saying over 50 miles, but realistically maybe 40 miles, maybe 40 miles plus depending on how you're riding. Here, you just have a connector there, pop that out and you can pick the battery up, take it inside to charge with you, take it into work, whatever you're doing, keeps it safe, it's a valuable part of the scooter and also makes it much easier to charge when you can carry that battery around. I really, really like that feature in scooters. Then you connect it back in, pop your battery back down, literally as simple as that, close that, turn the key and you're done, locked back in again. And they've got a little waterproof seal just on top there just to keep moisture out as well. Excellent feature. So battery back in the deck, there are also two 30 amp controllers in front of this deck, providing a lot of power to those motors between the battery and the motors and the display. So that is gonna give us speeds of say, I'm hoping for in the high 40s, but we'll see, we're gonna do a speed test later. Charging wise for the battery, you've got two chargers here. So they're the new mini motors design chargers, which is actually a lot nicer than the older charger. Um, they look safer, they look more sealed. Um, and they're slightly bigger uh, when you actually put the connector in. You'll see from the new design when we go up close. But yes, yeah, so charging the battery with one standard 1.7 amp charger, 60 volt charger will take around 13 hours. Whereas if you have a fast charger or even a fast charger and a standard charger, you're gonna get that all the way down to like four or five hours from zero to 100. So you can get a very quick charge through this battery and those charge ports are rated for that as well. Moving back along the deck, there's a nice rubberized foot plate here. That's really good as we've spoken about in previous videos for grip and comfort. It's something a lot of scooter companies are doing now. And personally, I prefer that to the grip tape um, that some companies have used in the past. Also, you feel like it's more waterproof when that's on there, whether, whether it is or not, I don't know, but it does give you a, a more confidence when it does get wet. It says Dualtron City along the front, big bold letters on the, on the actual deck here. As we move back, you'll see there's no foot play and a lot of the new Dualtrons have a built-in footrest. A lot of the new scooters have that as well. I believe that's probably because of the mechanism for opening and closing the deck here, which is where the foot plate would normally go. But they have left bolt holes here so you can fit your own foot plate or a Dualtron foot plate um, aftermarket or made by Mini Motors themselves right at the back like you used to be able to on the older Dualtron models. It's a long deck, you may not even have to, to do that if you don't want to, but for those guys that like riding with a foot, uh, foot rest, which I personally do, there is room to put one on the backs just above where the rear suspension cartridge is. I'm just also going to show you some more of the lighting. As you can see along here, there's even more LEDs. We saw the front headlights down here as well. We'd already seen the ones on the front swing arms but you have these side lights coming back as well. And if you can just about see there, you can pick up the rear swing arm as well from the back. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the rear of the scooter now. Big fender on the back, that's gonna protect again from all the muck from these big tires now flicking up onto you. The top of that also has LEDs on, which you can again set to whatever lighting you want. And we move down, we've talked about the tires already, 15 inch, we've got the suspension cartridge in here, big wide swing arms, and those 1000 watt nominal, 2000 peak watt motors, 4000 overall, as we spoke about, which is gonna hopefully give 45 mile per hour plus. Brakes are on this side, um, on the scooter on this side, and on this side here, so they're opposites. We come down on the back of the fender, we don't just have LEDs, we also have brake lights. So I'm just gonna turn the main lights off now, and then when we hold the brake, you'll see the brake lights coming on and off as we hold the brakes. Those brakes also cut the motors as they do on pretty much every e-scooter now. Brilliant safety function. And it seems that all of Dualtron's newest models have that feature as well. As we discussed earlier, we came up to the stem and we said the stem's a lot shorter than on a normal Dualtron because of the tire size. So here they still managed to fit in their LEDs. As you can see again, We've got more flashing lights here, just turn that off. And like I said earlier, we've got this new folding mechanism with a double clamp. So we'll just open that quickly. Both of those clamps open, lift up, and the neck folds down just like that. That will go all the way down to the bottom. It doesn't clip in anywhere, but you can't make the scooter any shorter than the total length. But like all Dualtrons, you can fold the handlebars in 
to make it more compact. So you've got that and you've got the neck. So if you're trying to fit it into a vehicle or something like that, it will make it easier. But it is a large scooter. It's not going to fit in a boot. Seats down, probably slide it into the back of a car. But it's more for storage in an urban environment, the reason that it actually folds. So as we alluded to earlier, very standard Dualtron handlebars. They have the folding mechanism. It's a strong mechanism. It's worked on all of their, or nearly all of their previous scooters, tried and tested. Ergonomic grips as usual, and we've got the Zoom hydraulic uh, brake levers there. Just gonna put the power on. We've got the classic Mini Motors Eye display, something I still think should be uh, upgraded on their new scooters because it is limited, and I guarantee you this is gonna, it's such an aggressive throttle, it shoots off. There isn't really a, there's no chill on this throttle. It doesn't have like a one mile an hour mode, it just goes. But some Jultron owners, or most Jultron owners, Mini Motors uh, owners, absolutely love that. They love the aggressive throttle. Same on some of the Kaboos, they have that eye display on them, and people love pulling away. I just personally think they could make a more advanced throttle where you can go into some of the settings in a bit more detail, like you can on, say, the Nami, something like that, where you can set the acceleration on each motor and things like that. But that's down the line for Jultron. So we'll just have a look at the Mini Motors display here. We've seen a lot of these before. If you've watched any of the videos, you've probably seen them before. Got the voltage here, or total voltage on a 60 volt. That's around 67 volts, total voltage. Um, when you go through, you've got the time if you want it. You've got the trip, you've got the odometer. You can also switch through your power modes, so one, two, and three, and they just limit the speed. We move over here. You'll see we've got the multi-button display that Jules trying to put in on a lot of their new scooters as well. On and off, that controls all of the lights. So when that's on, whatever lighting settings you've got on, that puts on and turns off. You've got the horn, we've done that already. Sorry for doing that again. You've got hazards, the hazard lights at the back. Eco mode is a really useful feature. As I keep saying, with a lot of the older Jultrons, you used to be able to switch between single and dual motor. These newer versions and a lot of new powerful scooters, you can't. It's safer for the scooter to use both motors at the same time. When you switch to a single, sometimes it can overheat that motor, put too much power through it, and you get motor failures or controller failures. Using the two has proven to have less problems. So there isn't a single motor function, but you can press eco, that takes the power of the motors down and makes it a bit easier if you want to go at slower speeds. And then that's it really. That's all there is to show on the new model. We've got this lovely, coil going over all the cables, making it neat and tidy. It's a nice looking scooter. Quite looking forward to taking it out. We're gonna mostly be on hard ground, I think, because that's what it's designed for, but we are gonna do a little bit of off-roading as well. Firstly, because it's fun, but also because we wanna see if the scooter can handle it at all. So we will see you out on the trails. Okay, so we've made it out. Sorry if you can hear a bit of uh, wind noise. It's got a bit windy and you might hear it on the microphone. Sorry about that. We're just about to do a speed run. We're gonna take it um, on some hard ground. It's called the Jultron City. So we're gonna test it in urban environments as it's supposed to be tested. And then we're gonna uh, take it off-road and see if it can handle some of the off-roading like some of the, uh, the other Jultron models that we've tested in the past. Right, let's get out there. So straight away, you hear that whir of the Jultron motors that they're quite renowned for. I've been on so many now, I know that sound well. I've actually put it in eco mode on um, setting one. So this is the slowest mode it will go and actually, it literally stops at nine miles an hour. Very, very manageable. I thought with this Mini Motors display that it was gonna be ultra aggressive, even in Eco, but actually I'm flat out here. You can see we're going nine mile an hour. Now what I'm gonna do is take it off Eco. Totally different. Okay, so we're at the bottom of the hill here. Two 1,000 watt nominal power or 4,000 peak power altogether. Not worried about this scooter making it up the hill, but we do it with all the scooters, so we're gonna test this one out as well. Okay, three, two, one, off we go. Oh, it bites already so quick. I'm only going a third throttle, just on the shallow section of the hill now. Now we're getting the steep bit. Oh, it's just eating it up. I could go so much faster. I'm going 15 mile an hour, but I'm fe feathering the throttle. This is the really steep bit of the hill. Not sure if you can pick it up on the camera there. So easy. Big tires are eating it up as well because there's some big bumps in this hill, big potholes. Yeah, and off we go. Right, just coming down to a steep hill, downhill now, so we'll see what the brakes are like. We've got the electric ABS on here as well, if you want to use it. I've turned it off for now. So I'm just using the um, Zoom hydraulic levers. Pretty good so far. We've got those big discs, the 160s. 
biting well. So we're going on a steep hill. If I want to stop, which I'm going to try and do now, right on the hill. Easy. Very controllable, really good bite. These um, brake pads haven't been worn in yet either. So they're only going to get a bit better. Like we said, we've used Zoom on a lot of uh, reviews before. They're on a lot of scooters. So we know what we're getting with them. It would be interesting. I was quite interested to see how they'd handle the bigger tires. Do you think they might need more braking power? But actually, they bite really well. These aren't beautiful roads, but they're smooth enough to get some proper speed up. It's now time for the speed run. We've got a completely clear run here, probably of about 600 meters, something like that. We're gonna see how fast we can get up to. Like I said, 4,000 watt peak power. We've got the 60 volt, 25 amp power battery with the two 30 amp controllers. I'm really hoping for over 45 mile an hour. There's a bit of wind, but it's sort of crosswind. Let's see what happens. Three, two, one. 25, 30. 35, 37, 41, 42. That is so scary. We hit the downhill section. I was holding at about 44 for ages, hit the downhill and it went to 46. Flashed on, I'm not pushing it further than that. I reckon it might've gone an extra one mile an hour maybe. I tell you what though, those wheels make it so stable. It felt really stable. Normally, you know, I'm, I'm not a big speed freak to be honest. I don't really want to go faster than that or faster than 30 ever. But with this, you get to 30 in no time. You don't even realize you're doing it. Those wheels just eat up the bumps in the ground. It stops all that, um, you know, all that shaking and all that. It felt so stable. Really quite impressed with that to be honest, but 46, I'm 85 kilos. Maybe a lighter rider can get faster or a braver rider. We'll have to try it out. Okay, just coming off the hard ground now, we're gonna hit a little bit of bumpy terrain. This is sort of made up ground, MOT, gravel. Oh, these big wheels just go over it. I've come down here loads of times on scooters. You know, even proper off-road scooters, but actually, this is probably the most comfortable one I've ever done it on. It doesn't have grip on the tires. You do feel them slide a little bit, but it's like, it's like being on a bicycle totally different and although you've got power you've got this you know pretty powerful motors to be honest it's not ridiculous acceleration it gets there quickly but you're not spinning both wheels off the line so you can hold it the trigger without jerking too much like I'm in the highest mode now if I want power look, look it'll bite but I can just hold it there nice and steady at sort of 15 to 20 mile an hour and this is a really bumpy section, really bumpy. There's flints, there's concrete blocks in here. There's all sorts. You probably hear my voice vibrating a bit. Big dips like that. The suspension's handled it really well, but I believe it's the tires. The suspension's the same on all the Jultrons. These tires make a massive difference. So although this isn't an off-road scooter, it can certainly handle a bit. Back onto the hard ground now. Very smooth ride. We're going a bit faster, what are we at now? 21, 22. Nice little downhill, it's, it's so easy. Joe, you know what, the only annoying thing that's annoying me, I'm a, just under six foot, let's say I'm six foot. Um, it's, um, the handlebars are a bit low and I know they are on Jultrons, I know you can raise them, but as standard, you just, I just feel like I need that a bit higher, especially with these bigger wheels. I wanna be a bit more, feel a bit more protected up top. So I'm sort of leaning over the scooter a bit. But I think they come with a medium suspension normally, medium to hard, that's perfect. I don't think I'd want it any softer. Comfortable here, some more bumps, lots of gravel. It's gripping so well. It is a dry day today. It's not wet. It might be different when it's wet. Loads of slippery gravel here. Going a bit uphill now, but a lovely feel. These tires are brilliant. Could be the future, you know, bigger tires. So yeah, just having those handlebars raised slightly higher with a bit more of a rake back angle, I think would be perfect. But for me, this scooter feels so comfortable. I mean, it shouldn't go 47 mile an hour. I feel like it, it needs, I don't know. It feels like a scooter, like they said, a city that you could just cruise around town on, but they've put these beastly motors in it and get, <laughs> it's just dual tron all over that is, isn't it? Look, I'm just cruising here, 20 mile an hour. And if I give it some beans, full on acceleration. Right up onto the grass verge we go off the track. See how it handles a bit of bump. This is a really thick, bumpy grass up here. 
Yeah, nice and easy. Those big tires make a massive difference. It's still really bumpy, but they're just rolling over the ruts you sometimes get stuck in. I'm not going fast either, look, we'll drop back down. Oh, so smooth, even the big tires, you don't have to drop off the edge, they just roll down the edge like you do on a bike. As promised, we're gonna do some off-roading now. We've done some hard ground riding, we've done some speed tests, uh, hill climbs, and we went off a bit bumpy on the gravel sort of tracks, bit sort of unmade roads, but now we're really on the off-road. Now, it doesn't have ultra hard acceleration, so I doubt it's gonna bite up those really steep hills, but the big tires are gonna make it much more forgiving. So first of all, we'll give it a little blast on here, see if it makes it up this little hill, and then off we go into the woods. Oh, oh, easy! It's a new trail, I haven't been on this one before. Normally it's too wet to ride, because it's so dry this summer. It's dried out loads, you, it's loads of new lines come on in the forest. It's a bigger scooter this, the city. Bigger than the other scooters we test, longer but the tires are bigger, so like more like a bike, you can still get through. Having these larger tires not only helps you going up and over the bumps, but actually down the hill, you don't feel like you're gonna dig in when you hit the bottom. It really makes it a smoother transition. Oh, this is nice, we're gonna head around to the left here. And then round to the right. And then up the hill. I don't think it'll be nimble enough. Woo! Go on, yes, made it. So as you can see, as I'm braking on the scooter, the lights are coming on on the back. Pick your line here. This is still rutted from the winter. Oh yes, those big tires just eat it up. One thing I don't like, but can be sorted, is it doesn't have that foot rest at the back. And that is the way I ride there. So I'm having to just, I'm sort of just on my tiptoes at the moment keeping my foot in here, which feels a bit weird. I want to press down on something and I don't want to do that on the fender because I don't want to break it. Really flinty ground here now, really bumpy and flinty. Can't, don't know if you can see it, but it's handling it very well. One thing Jultrons have is the motors are a bit loud. I don't know if you can hear it, it's like sort of a like a whine. Some other scooters don't have that, like the Namis, etc. Those smooth sine wave controllers, just silent. Here we go. <laughs> oh look, that's great acceleration though, look at it. Oh, the brambles whip you so bad. Woo! Oh, oh, trees in the way. Quite thick brambles, it's eating its way for it all. Feel sorry for the poor filmmaker on a one wheel. Oh yes, it is nimble. It's so comfortable. They shouldn't have called it the city. They should have called it the forest. Slash city. Slash can pretty much do anything. I, w I wouldn't trust the suspension on big jumps. But look, here's a big bit of wood. Eats it up just like a bike. Kick that out. Off we go. This is a fun scooter. You can't do this on every scooter. The tires are big enough. You can literally drop in on these uh, horse tracks and tractor tracks, going up and over. This is flinty, muddy, not nice ground, but these tires give you confidence. Where are we going now? always like to try this test here. Um, only certain scooters can make it up. I don't think we've had anything under a, maybe a Phantom that's got up here. This is a heavier scooter, 42 kilos. Um, it's a big, long scooter, but it's dry weather. I reckon it's got a chance, you know. Let's give it a go. So we're going from basically nothing here. I don't know if you can see how steep this is. Here we go. Go on. Look at that. That was basically from a standing start, and I was rolling, but like one, two miles an hour. That is so steep. Watch me on the way down here, how you have to control it. It's so steep, look. It just wants to go, it's just skidding. But with the big tires, you ease down the slope as well. I mean, this, this is so much better than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> I thought it was just gonna be nipping around town and it would be quick. This is handling everything. Hopefully it can handle it and we're not just damaging it, but it seems strong, sturdy. It's really surviving everything we're putting it through. 
pine cones here. Woo! Let's go. Skidding on all that dust. So we were even trying to bit a few jumps on it just then. I mean, I probably should have tightened the handlebars up more because they've just moved a bit, a bit sketchy. But I couldn't have done that. Well, I could, but I wouldn't have felt as comfortable doing that on a smaller wheeled scooter. Because when you land, you land in dips and things like that. So you really have to judge your landing. With the bigger tires, it's much more forgiving. Tiring. Haven't done reviews for ages. Do you know what? I'm so surprised with this Jordan City. I, like I said earlier, I really thought it was going to be 20 to 30 mile an hour scooter, hard ground, bumpy. You know, Dualtron often have their suspension really hard. Those big tyres, I mean, if that's what the difference they've made, those big tyres make so much difference. It just eats up the bumps. It's really comfortable. Only annoying thing for me is the stem's a bit short. I want it higher, wider handlebars. Foot plate doesn't have, bit annoying. All those things you can change though. You can raise a stem, put better handlebars, get a foot plate. This thing is a beast. I don't know how long it would last hammering it in the woods like we were just doing. You know, I'm not a hard rider, but we were going over some real bumpy, stiff terrain on there. And I know we said we were gonna just test it out on the hard ground, because that's what it's for. I had so much more fun in the woods. It was brilliant. Like really, really good, so surprised. Jewel trying to have done such a good job with this. Do you know what? I'd probably put better brakes on as well because I didn't realise how fast it was going to go. Or maybe they just need a bit of bleeding, but every now and again, I did feel like, oh, I could do, because it's heavy. It pulls you forward. I thought maybe get some Maguras on there or something like that. But as a scooter, what a cool scooter that Jewel have made. If you want to come and have a go on it, come down to Ride and Glide. Give us a call. Give us an email. Send us a live chat. If you've got a question about it, write it down in the comments section. Like the video, please subscribe to the channel. We're always trying to put out good content. For more info, again, go www.ridingglide.co.uk if you want to check out the website. But once again, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.